Hi, everyone, and welcome to CloudBees session with Kerasoft's Geek Week. Today, we're going to be talking about CloudBees SDA, specifically IT modernization through software de delivery automation, which is CloudBees SDA. It takes core SDA capabilities in order to connect, automate, orchestrate tools across development, operations, shared services teams, uh, all to optimize your software delivery. In this tech talk, CloudBees will be discussing the primary SDA capabilities that federal agencies should be considering as part of their IT modernization efforts to better manage and monitor your paths to production and meet the ever evolving needs of the government. So a good place for us to start are focusing on the anchors of the CloudBees product suite. So this is what makes up CloudBees SDA as we're talking about the modernization and monitoring your path to production. Primarily, we're going to be focusing on Cloud BCI, an enterprise-grade hardened version of uh, Jenkins. It's really focused on scalability, running things with governance, ensuring compliance, all those really great components that large agencies require. And then secondly, we're going to be talking about Cloud BCD, and this was a product formerly known as Electric Clouds Flow. It's an application orchestration tool. What it really does, it focuses on release. It really focuses on building bodies of evidence for you and your approvers to then evaluate. And then from that evaluation, have very clear reasons to promote it between your environments, have a very clear audit trail, have the ability to uh, make sure that you're always gonna be compliant with things like uh, NIST, RMF, FIPS, uh, FISMA, all sorts of things like that. So that's really its focus. This is a kind of a life cycle management solution here that can pull data and metrics from all the different tools that you might be using in your software delivery lifecycle. The last bit, which won't be a primary focus of today, but I think is very important that we mention as well, is CloudBees feature flag. So as you move into production, as you start adopting things like feature flag development, it's really important that you have a solution that allows you to manage and maintain all of those feature flags across your different environments, across your different applications, so that you can kind of set things up to do things like blue-green deployments, canary releases, really target specific environments and specific user bases, like alpha and beta user groups, as you are deploying features. It's also a really easy way for you to do things like rollback because everything is now hidden behind a feature flag or really just a conditional execution that makes life a lot easier. So that's the backbone of CloudBees SDA. And as we kind of move forward, we'll show where each one of these pieces fits in and where it can help you and your teams uh, with your modernization efforts. So here's an idea of some software delivery use cases. You can see multiple teams. We're focusing on continuous integration, continuous delivery to the far left. That's the world of Jenkins, it's the world of CI engines. And then as you move further right, you'll see things like release orchestration, continuous delivery across multiple processes, across multiple teams. And then the far right you'll see on this graphic is feature development. And that's what we're focusing on, CloudBees feature flags. So you can see kind of as they're mapped out, each one of these tools is specially uh, position to resolve the needs across the different sorts of teams that might be using the products themselves, right? So some CI, Enterprise Jenkins, release orchestration, multiple tools, multiple environments, tracking of evidence, building of audit reports, that's Cloud CD, and then feature flag management, the far right, as we're trying to pinpoint specific use cases. So what does CloudBees do that makes so much better than, let's say, an open source Jenkins or if you had to build your own application release tool? Well, first of all, what we're able to do is we're able to orchestrate the entire software delivery lifecycle. By doing this, we're able to do a few different things. We're able to increase your productivity. We're able to eliminate things like manual error-prone tasks, manual handoffs and approvals. We want to be rid of those entirely. We're able to eliminate the silos between those teams by being able to run this at scale and have everyone working from the same sheet of music. You're able to uh, empower your teams, make sure that they have the tools that they deem to be necessary, that they're enabling their own best practices because each team's best practices might be different from each other. And then lastly, and most importantly, we're also able to ensure security and compliance. That is going to be a very common undertone throughout this entire discussion is always keep security and compliance top of mind with whatever CICD work, whatever DevSecOps initiatives that you try to enable within your organizations. 
when you're thinking about release orchestration, this is the space of Cloud BCD, what do we want to do? We want to be able to map out predictable, safe, reliable releases. And that's exactly what the tool is meant to do. You want to create reusable release pipelines. You want to eliminate as much of the uh, manual gathering of evidence, you know, across different spreadsheets, across different teams, make the lives of authorizing officials or release engineers as simple as possible, right? Give them predictable evidence so they can make predictable deployments. Make it as self-service as possible. Generate catalogs of releases for these teams so that you're not doing one-off releases or one-off deployments every single time that you uh, need to push something to production. And then lastly, and almost most importantly here, while security, I said mentioned earlier, is very important, you also want to be able to track how are these changes affecting my results? Am I driving more value to production? Is my investment successful at this point? How can I see which best practices are actually effective and share these across my teams? And that's exactly what CD allows you to do. It allows you to track your insights, give you uh, the ability to identify patterns in a 360 degree visibility into all of your releases, into all of your deployment metrics across all the different tools that might be hanging off your software delivery lifecycle. So the first step I'd like to talk about when we're discussing uh, CloudBees SDA is CloudBees Jenkins. So this is uh, CloudBees CI, it's enterprise grade version of Jenkins. It resolves a couple of major issues that we see present in open source. Open source is, open source Jenkins is the number one CI tool in the marketplace today. It's so great, it's able to integrate with over 1600 different tools today. There's a lot of open source work, there's a lot of reusability that's already baked out there. However, we run into issues when we're talking to agencies or we're talking to organizations that need to run Jenkins at scale. So you'll see the first of the two anti patterns on this slide is the Jenkins monolith. That's the idea of a single large monolithic Jenkins server. This is supporting all of your different teams, all of your integrations, all of your credentials, all of your jobs are processing from one single Jenkins controller. Just so you know, a controller now, it was previously called a Jenkins master. So those terms are synonymous. But that Jenkins controller, when it's supporting too much workload, supporting too many integrations, it becomes very fragile. It's difficult to upgrade. It's difficult to onboard new teams. It's difficult to uh, upload new integrations for new tools because you're your tool suite or the, the actual processes that Jenkins is automating for you is going to be ever-changing. The world of DevSecOps is constantly evolving. There's new tools. There's new best practices. You need to have the ability to evolve with that marketplace as well. So when you have a monolithic instance, it's very difficult because sometimes you need to take the server down, do an upgrade, can't bring a new plugin on for, let's say, a month or two because it's too difficult to, to run such a... a a new integration, you're really limiting what you're able to do with that Jenkins monolith and you might be suffering outages that'll affect every developer because all of them are focused and all of their work is being run by one single server. So that's one giant centralized blast radius that we don't want to occur. The second bit of this is the Jenkins sprawl. So Jenkins sprawl is a great way to kind of resolve some of the issues of the Jenkins monolith now each one of your teams gets their own Jenkins controller, their own Jenkins instance. They're able to have their own integrations to find their best practices on their own individual servers. However, this is also an anti-pattern because you lose a lot of the security and compliance that you get with the monolith because now we have this big sprawling landscape of Jenkins servers that require one, a bigger team to manage and maintain them across all the different developers or across all of your different operations teams, whoever is using Jenkins. And then two, you lose the ability to set in things like standard operations or one centralized authentication realm or a centralized role-based access control. You get all of that with the monolith and you lose it with Jenkins Sprawl. So it kind of ends up evolving into very often a, a Wild West kind of um, helter-skelter sort of installation of Jenkins. So we want to avoid both of those. So what Cloud BCI allows you to do is adopt best practices from each one of these open source anti-patterns. It allows you to have one single pane of glass to set up things like governance and standardization, which you get with the monolith. However, it also allows you to run Jenkins at scale, like you'll see with Jenkins Sprawl, which is critically important as well. Moving forward to Cloud BCD, as we're talking about CI is kind of done at this point, let's manage releases across our different environments. Let's be able to manage and monitor our path to production. CD is specifically designed to do that. It allows you to use a market leading release orchestration tool to now pull metrics from all of your different tools, your Jenkins builds, your JIRA boards, your change logs from Git. Uh, anything that might be a part of your path to production, CD is able to monitor 
pull in uh, data, build out reports, build metrics, build dashboards, and also allow you to include things like manual promotions between environments as well as automated promotions as well. So it really does help you build uh, very reliable release structures for your software applications or your infrastructure to process through as you go into production. Specifically, a few things we want to mention when it comes to security and compliance with Cloud BCD. It allows you to have role-based access control, just like you get within Jenkins. You can support things like single sign-on. You can set up with LDAP, Okta, Active Directory, all of those different tools. Um, you're able to include all the different members within uh, your processes. So all the stakeholders, whether they be developers, team leads, shared services leads, operations, infrastructure engineers, release engineers, they all have a role and a very critical one inside of your release structure as you process through things like development, QA, pre-production and production environments. Each one of those stakeholders is critically important to building out predictable releases and we want to include them inside of tools like CD so they can able, they can quickly uh, see all of the the data, all of the build history, every component that's particularly important to their role is presentable within Cloud BCD. So we're able to expedite the process to production. And then you're also, and I want to add this as kind of the last point here because I don't want to stick on this for too long, uh, we're able to build in a very, very rigid audit trail. Everything is tracked within CD. Every build that you do, every approval that you do, whether it be automated or manual, every test that you run, Every report that is generated, it's all auditable, it's all traced within Cloud BCD. So you have a very clean audit history to go back on if you need to. If you need to do a rollback or if you needed to perform an actual physical audit, you can do that as well. So what does this mean? So when we're talking about CD and we're talking about CI, how does this help? What we're trying to do is we're trying to help you support a more continuous or accelerated ATO cycle. That is most commonly the largest bottleneck within the federal community. We wanna have the ability to speed that up, make this visible for all of the uh, necessary stakeholders so that we can move things from development to production as fast and predictably as possible. What this might look like, so here is a Cloud BCD release, but it's including Enterprise Jenkins, including Cloud BCI, it's including many different tools. You can see it has Git, it has Jira in here, it has uh, sonar scans happening, it has manual approvals. This is a Kanban view of a release pipeline in Cloud BCD, and each stakeholder has their own specific role in this. And you'll notice all along the way, every task that is occurring inside of this release structure is building dashboards, it's building reports, it's building a body of evidence for what we see here at the end in the pre-production before it goes into production for an authorizing official to then consume, evaluate, and promote into production. So you're able to speed up the process for an AO because you're continuously building that body of evidence by automated audit uh, reporting, automated dashboard creation for them rather than having to have things like change approval boards, sit down, everyone bring your evidence to me. It's a very slow process. The state of DevOps report, the Dora group, they've identified those old practices like change approval boards to be very big contributors to low performing DevSecOps initiatives. So we wanna eliminate that. We wanna move past that. We wanna to evolve towards something that's more streamlined and more functional for you and your organization. Just conceptually as an idea, this is kind of what the reports would look like in Cloud BCD as they're generated. This is something that uh, a release engineer or an authorizing official has the ability to go back and look at. They can look at approval audits, they can look at evidence links gathering, they can look at the JIRA issues, the change logs from Git, the Jenkins history, the sonar results, your unit testing, your SIT testing across tools like Selenium. All of that is now available on one pane of glass. That's critically important that they're able to review this and make their decisions as quickly as possible. Even if that decision is to halt a promotion to production, the faster you can kick that back to developers, the faster you can generate that feedback loop, the more effective all of your changes will be and the more value you'll be able to drive as an end result to your DevSecOps uh, initiatives. And lastly, I did want to share this. This is a really cool thing that Cloud BCD does extremely well. It's not something that Jenkins does extremely well, but it's able to pull results from Jenkins. It's able to pull results from Sonar, from Git. It can build dashboards out for you so that you can track your performance, continuously improve, kind of iterate on best practices across your teams, drive your DevSecOps initiatives internally, because as you're able to show effective results by using things like CloudBees SDA, moving more towards 
um, predictable releases, moving more towards automation within Jenkins, it's going to grow in adoption. A lot of times you need to prove these small wins for key stakeholders at your organizations to drive this across different groups. You'll also see that it's able to uh, customize any of these dashboards as well. So while we ship it out of the box with some specific little dashboards pre-configured, we know that not all metrics are equal across different organizations and you need to track things um, specifically relevant for you and your agency. So on that note, I'd like to dive into a live demonstration of CloudBees SDA and how it could be effectively used across uh, right here, CloudBees CD, and then on this screen, Cloud BCI, this is Enterprise Jenkins. I'm on a single controller here. And then how can I promote things very quickly across my different environments, but also very stably. So I have uh, predictable releases as we move forward. That's, that's the name of the game here. We wanna ensure compliance and security while also promoting things to production as fast as possible to drive value. So what you'll see here, the only things I have up right now, I have a CloudBees uh, CI installation. This is my single Jenkins instance, previously called a master. We call them controllers now. Uh, I have a number of jobs. I have a couple of repository level jobs as well. I've also built out a release pipeline in CloudBees CD. So you'll see I have two environments, pre-production and production. This release readiness Kanban column, all this is doing is it's pulling in metrics from my Jenkins builds to build that body of evidence uh, for my release candidate as it moves to production. I'll, I'll explain that further as we move forward. I also have a, a Git organization here uh, with two repositories, one that manages my infrastructure code and one that manages my Java uh, Spring Boot application. So this is kind of moving more towards the GitOps mentality of application as code, stored in the same location as your infrastructure as code. You can arrange this in a multitude of different ways. It doesn't need to be multi-repo. It could be a mono-repo. Um, a lot of folks have differing opinions on this. I did it in this manner because I wanna be able to change my application without anything affecting my infrastructure and vice versa. So those are set up in different repos with different webhooks. Uh, that way I can make a change and only what I've changed will be affected as an end result due to my automation within Jenkins. I've also uh, installed uh, open source Nexus. So my artifact management repository and I'm running all of this on Google Cloud. So my installation of Cloud BCI is running on GKE. Google's Kubernetes engine, as well as Cloud BCD. However, I do wanna say that neither of those tools need to be run in the cloud, neither of them need to be run in Kubernetes or as a container. They can be run on-prem, they can be run uh, in the cloud, they can be installed on a VM, on bare metal, they can be installed as a container. It really doesn't matter. We don't care which version or what flavor you'd like to install them as, they work exactly the same. So everything that I'm showing you today is completely achievable with whatever install pattern you would choose to uh, implement with your group. So just a level set, um, this is my Nexus repo. I don't have any artifacts built yet, so we're starting from a clean slate. And you can look inside of my Google Cloud platform here. I have no VMs up at this time, so I am gonna be provisioning brand new VMs, which I'm going to deploy an artifact, just a basic jar file to that VM in both a pre-production and production VM instance so that we can kind of see we're starting with a blank slate and we can kind of see where CloudBees SDA can take us and how quickly this can be done. And all along the way, I have a clean audit trail. I have very, uh, very automated and connected processes across my different stakeholders and across my different roles of my organization. So just to start, the first thing that I'm going to do, and this is the, the general flow of this, is I need to build an artifact that I can deem ready for release. So I need to create a release candidate. And you'll see I already have pre-baked in my application. I have a Jenkins file here. So this is my pipeline. This is gonna be performing my Maven compilation. It's gonna be pulling my source code. It's gonna be running my sonar results. And then at the end of this, what it's going to do is gonna use Maven to publish my artifact to my Nexus repository. And then once that has been successfully completed, it's then going to kick off this release pipeline in CloudBCD saying, hey, I've validated all of my steps of CI, I've built an artifact, I've tested it, I've scanned it, I've published it to Nexus, it is now a valid release candidate. Is this ready to be executed through pre-production and production? So that's the general handoff between the two solutions. It's all about using CI to build that artifact, make it as uh, 
interconnected as possible between your security and developers. And then once that's achieved, now it needs to be released. And in this case, it's a very simple example where it's just one single application. We're building two different VMs that we're actually deploying this to. But in reality, you might have something like a three-tiered application or you might have dependencies across your different environments. That becomes very complex to manage and maintain as you're releasing to production. So what you can do is you can use Cloud BCD to track those dependencies, make sure everything is in the right place at the right time before you actually promote it to production. And you can ensure that with entry and exit gate criteria, which you see here I'm opening up. In each environment, I can create manual approvals or automated approvals based on test results or based on a certain version existing in production before it can be moved there. And if any of these fail, this release is dead in the water right there. You should file back another ticket back to your developers, make that change, start that feedback loop so you can drive some more uh, value to production as you're kind of moving forward. So I hope that all is relatively clear, and I know I'm moving relatively fast. We only have a certain amount of time for these sorts of discussions, so I want to get through as much as possible. But that's the general relation between the two solutions, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm in my Jenkins file here. I'm just going to make a quick change to it because I already have uh, most of this already built out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this uh, empty line here, this carriage return, and I'll say uh, dummy kickoff of java app build that's what i'll call i'll commit this to my master branch here ideally um, just for time's sake i'm not doing this but you have two branches like a development and a master and i think they're changing master by the way to main branch that's that's kind of github's thing now so we can make this change originally to developer make sure you test it out the development branch and then you would submit a pr against master branch but for the purposes of today and our time constraints I'm going to do it right to master. So commit that. By committing this, it is triggering a webhook against my Jenkins pipeline or my Cloud BCI pipeline. So if I go inside of this repo, you will now see that I should have a master job right here that has just been kicked off. So I can click into this and I can see at this point what's happening. It's running build number 44. Actually, let me go back really quick. Here are my six. Uh, seven stages, I should say, of CI that I want to mention, pulling the source code, running my Maven compilation, running some sonar scans, running some quality scans, security scans, deploying that thing to Nexus, and then release, uh, triggering a release candidate. One thing I want to add is that in my strategy here on my development branch, you should have a conditional statement that won't deploy to Nexus or kick off a release candidate. You only want these two to occur once it's been accepted as a pull request against your master branch, right? You don't want any developer just pushing or triggering releases. It needs to be going through its pre-approved uh, cycle, whether that be your software team lead or whether that be a product owner, whoever it may be at your organization that needs to verify that what that developer has done as a new change is actually um, correct and is able to be processed into your environments or as a release candidate. So as this is running, uh, a few things that I want to show today. So it's, it's pulling a bunch of dependencies right now from Maven Central. A few things um, that are critically important are the ability to do these approvals in the correct places. So here's the first example of where an approval could be done. And I'm not saying that this is right or wrong. You can organize or architect this any way you'd like. But what you can do is you can include certain users and give them approval permissions on your pipeline within Jenkins. I can approve this and say, okay, my sonar results came through. I built this. It pulled down all the Maven dependencies. This is ready to be processed as a release candidate. Approve it. Or I could do approvals all entirely within Git with pull requests and webhooks. Or I could do them all inside of Cloud BCD. All of my approvals could look like this where I'm waiting for a, a PM to approve this at, at this point. But since I just approved this from Cloud BCI, don't mean to jump around really quickly, What's happening is that's a previous build, by the way, that I aborted, but uh, release candidate 136 was just triggered. So I deem that to be a very valid release candidate. We built an artifact. Now it needs to process through my release structure or my release pipeline in Cloud BCD. And what it's currently doing is it just pulled all the JIRA tickets associated with it. It pulled all the, JIRA, uh, the Git change logs and history. It's now pulling the build results from what we just ran. So that build that we just ran in Cloud BCI, it's processing and pulling in all the metrics, all the logging from that build so that I can start to build this body of evidence for my approvers. 
Just to make sure we can double check that this was actually built, I can go back to Nexus. Remember, Maven releases was previously empty. Now, voila, I have a jar file. It has been successfully published into uh, Nexus at this point. So there it is. From here, it's going to be pulled from Nexus and deployed to the different VMs that I'm actually provisioning on the fly. Remember, I don't have any bare bone VMs up and ready for uh, installation yet. So we're going to create those as part of our CI CD pipelines here. So as this is processing through, you can see it's, it's pulled all of my Jenkins build history. It's now pulling all of my sonar results. And a really cool thing that I'm able to do with Cloud BCD is I can directly pull results from my sonar dashboard and insert them into my Cloud BCD structure. So what I've said is based on the sonar results, this should always fail. It'll never go to PM approval if it finds code smells greater than two, which you, know, you might want to set that threshold to even zero. In your case, you can define these differently or if sonar finds any critical violations. If anything ever has a critical violation based on the sonar build that comes through here, sonar scan from the Jenkins build, it is never a valid release candidate to process through the next stage of pre-prod or production. So what I can do as the PM, I can go back and I can look at, okay, what do I wanna see at this point? Do I wanna kick this over to the next role? Because so far I've been a developer, maybe the software team lead, I ran it as the master job. I approved it to go to Nexus and I kicked off my release pipeline. At this point, let's say the PM or the product manager or whatever you want to call that role at your organization, now they're saying, am I ready to give it my sign off and send this up to someone uh, like a release engineer? So you can look at this, you can review all of the history. I don't need to know anything about Jenkins as a PM. I don't need to know anything about the application either. I have all of it present right here. I can review, okay, here's the Jenkins build. Here are the dependencies getting pulled down from Maven Central, yada, yada. I can look at this. It'll actually have the sonar results uh, that can be published here as well. I could go to the sonar dashboard and I can evaluate those. That's all present here. I can also go in and I can look at my dashboards if I wanted to. I could be tracking live metrics across my different dashboards at, at my individual release. I could go to my releases and I could see Okay, this is where we are. This is how long the first build took. This is the approver at this point. This is the duration generally of that time. Are we way off? Are we way high? Are we way low? You can evaluate all of this before you actually hit the approval button to move this to pre-production. So as I go back to my release, pull it up really quickly. I can now say I am confident this is ready to move to pre-production as the PM. So what I'll say, I'll be like, okay, I am ready to approve this. So this is human in the loop. Human in the loop is still very, very present in very regulated industries. So government, federal, insurance, all of that is still very, very uh, regulated. And having physical human beings go in and look at and evaluate these things, that's not leaving the software delivery life cycle. We don't mean to cut that out at all. Instead, we want to make their job easier, right? Because now, as that PM, I didn't have to go back in and authenticate in or have a username to go and check out the Jenkins build or have a username to go evaluate Sonar or go find the Jira story that might be associated with this or go look at the change logs and Git. It's all available right here by the reports that are generated within Cloud BCD. And even nicer, if you're a metrics driven person, I can go and evaluate all those dashboards as well before I make my decision. So now we'll say it's been kicked over to the release engineer and they're ready for this to go through pre-production. And as part of pre-production, what it's going to do is going to provision a VM and deploy it onto that VM. So if I am a release manager, maybe let's just say as an example, I know for a fact this is not ready to go to uh, pre-production, I could kill it right here. But for the sake of today, we're gonna say, yes, this is ready to go to pre-production, let's approve it. And by approving this, all that's going to happen is it's now going to run another Jenkins job. So all of the actual tasks within this Cloud BCD job are actually running and being implemented via Jenkins pipelines inside of Cloud BCI. So that's the relationship between the two, right? The one is an orchestrator, you know, really managing and maintaining the life cycle, pulling in data, building reports, building that body of evidence. And the other, Cloud BCI, is actually doing the automation. It's doing all of the things around building the application, provisioning the infrastructure, doing all of that. And once again, 
just because it is doing that automation, the actual tasks were Maven doing the build and then provisioning the infrastructure. If you go look at my source code here, it's not Jenkins that's actually provisioning the infrastructure. We're using Ansible. So you can use best of breed tools, whether that be Ansible, whether that be something like Chef or Puppet or Terraform, pick and choose what fits your team the best. The good thing is that Jenkins is so dynamic and is so expandable that it can integrate with any of those tools and you can implement them within your automation pipeline. So that's where it fits into the general story. So just as an idea for some context, we can take a look at this playbook. Right now, what it's going to be doing is it's going to be provisioning a VM for us that we named pre-production with that Jenkins pipeline. That pre-production VM is going to have a disk size of 25 GB. The base image is going to be Ubuntu version 18.04. I'm going to be spinning that up in US Central 1A, creating my network, I'm getting the external address, I'm doing the firewall. All of this is what's happening and I don't need to know all of this necessarily as a release engineer. I don't need to know how Ansible is doing work. I don't need to know how Jenkins is doing work, but I can still see this was successful. There were no vulnerabilities. These are the people that approved it or made changes to it. It's all presentable on that single pane of glass that is CloudBCD. So as this is running, you can see right here in my Jenkins file, this is the actual file it's running and I have it uh, set on branch dependencies. So I just kicked that off on the pre-prod branch, which is gonna create uh, a pre-prod VM which is gonna deploy this on. So that's exactly what's going to occur here. And then the secondary one is gonna create a production VM. So right now you should see, if I go back to my Jenkins instance, my pre-prod job is currently running. So build number 54 here, it's currently installing Java. It's already created the disk, the address, the instance. So we should see a pre-prod instance right now up in my Google Cloud project. So if I went to Google Cloud at this moment, Refresh the screen, up, oh, there it is. There is my pre-prod VM. It is now just pulling down the artifact that we built and stored in Nexus here, the one that exists in Maven releases. It's going to deploy this jar file to this pre-prod VM, and we have an accessible IP address where we can go in and check out to see if this application is truly running. So thus far with CI/CD, we've gone from nothing to a built artifact. And now we actually have a VM that is provisioned and we're gonna have that artifact deployed on that VM. So let's see where we are. It's installing PIP, taking its sweet time on, on that step. And as this uh, kind of completes the Ansible playbook, if I go back to uh, my actual Cloud BCD panel, once again, I could track this live inside of CD. I can go to the dashboards again. I can do all of this from CD. I don't need to navigate between 10 different tools or talk to 10 different stakeholders and owners of these different products or these different projects. Instead, it's all presentable and captured right here for your approvers. So that way you can accelerate your um, ATO process or your authority to operate. Whatever that approval, whatever that name might uh, take for your agency. That's what we're talking about, right? The ability to verify whatever changes or whatever new application that's coming through is valid to be released into production. So as this continues, um, a few things that I did want to mention, I'm sure some of you may have noticed this in the beginning as well. Um, the name of my repository here is cp gitops So everything I'm showing you today, it is focused on SDA and where does Cloud BCI versus Cloud BCD fit into this and how can it help accelerate your authority to operate or your approval cycle to production. It's also really important that the tools and our what we're kind of demonstrating here uh, supports things like GitOps. You know, that's a very hot term right now. It's where the industry is moving. That way, Git now serves as your single source of truth. It has a constant capture of both your application, its current state, and your infrastructure in its current state as well. So we want to showcase that that is also very possible with the tools where it's not just Cloud BCD that acts as a source of truth, a report or an audit trail. You also have everything captured within uh, Git as well. That way, um, if you need to go back and see who changed what, what was the timestamp, what was the committer, why was this done, you have multiple avenues of security or layers of depth when it comes to an audit or a rollback if they're necessary, right? And we're trying to eliminate the need for rollbacks because now we're building very stable, very secure software, right? 
So what's been done, um, it just provisioned that pre-prod VM. It kicked off a Slack message to one of my channels to let me know this has been done. This is the IP address that is now uh, deployed to. And I also used it uh, to create a, a pull request between my pre-production and production uh, branches if there was a change um, in my Ansible playbook, which we didn't make a change today, but you really could have. We could have changed the base image, we could have upped the disk size, anything that, that might be required. So this is the step where a release engineer would say, okay, this has been done successfully, this is ready to go to production, hand this off to the AO or your authorizing official. So we hand this off, this is our, you know, more of our human in the loop processes here as this is kind of uh, taking its time to think about my acceptance. And then the next step will be the AO, go back, review what's been done, evaluate, make sure that this is ready to actually go to production. And once that we can validate that um, step, sorry, I just need to refresh. I don't know why it was a little buggy there. Now it is saying as an AO, uh, can you now approve this step and the first thing would be go in take a look at this pull request first you might want to review all of that history that we've built at this point review the dashboards make sure everything is valid this body of evidence that we've been collecting across release readiness and pre-production you might have run more sit tests or more smoke tests here this is a very very simple example but now that AO has the ability to review all of the data all the metrics that have been captured across every tool right there are tools here that we want to gather things from that live outside of the scope of Jenkins. Jira, for example. I mean, I can pull change logs down too, I guess, into Jenkins from Git. However, there's a lot of things that I want to maybe have that live outside of my general CI pipelines that are very, very important pieces of the body of evidence that I need to review as it goes to production. So go in here as the AO. Let me go check if there's a PR. We can review this. There is not a PR don't need to approve it. I'll say I reviewed this, I reviewed the body of evidence. Let's kick this off, let's deploy this to production at this point. So by hitting accept here, it is now running to production. And just due to the time that we have left, we probably won't see this go all the way to production. We'll take a look and see if we can. But during this time, what we're able to do is maybe we can go back and look at, you know, was our application really deployed to this new VM that we created with Cloud BCI and CD? So I'll take that external IP address, I'm running it on port 8080, so we'll just check port 8080. And all we're actually running is a really simple chat service. So I can just plug in a username, and all of a sudden, here's my application. Java Techie Global Chat Box is up. So I can say, hi, how is everyone? Maybe you wanna run some user acceptance testing or something like that in your pre-production environment. That's all possible. So we've actually proven to this point we can build an application very easily with Enterprise Jenkins, Cloud BCI. We can then produce a body of evidence, collect metrics, promote it across the different stakeholders, present this very cleanly uh, laid out report for a, an authorizing official to then approve it as a, a, an accelerated ATO or move it into production. So that's the name of the game speed up that process as it moves to production and then along the way make sure you're able to manage and monitor that path as well. So we've been able to do that to pre-production and now as the job runs through production you'll see that it'll spin up a production VM and it'll deploy that application as well. So just to make sure we can go back into Jenkins and I can see that my production job is now running. So that's the communication between CI and CD. These can be triggered via webhooks from your Git repo, which actually pre-production does have a webhook if I made a change to it. And then my production job, this was triggered from an approval inside of Cloud BCD. There's a million different ways you can architect this to make most sense for who are the stakeholders or who are the approvers or how would you like to do this with webhooks in your organization. One way is not necessarily better than the other. It's really about what fits your users your operations teams, your infrastructure admins, what fits them best? You know, that's what you want to adapt your, your pipelines to reflect, something that can provide value to each one of them. So we'll just take a look really quickly to see how this is processing through. Um, it's installing Java. Ironically, opened it at the exact same time um, that pre-production was uh, at when I opened that one as well. So at this point, we should see, we now have a production VM that is now running inside of my Google uh, Cloud Platform Console here. 
So as this is refreshing really quickly, I do in fact have a production VM that is now up. And as part of this, what it should be doing is next, it will um, deploy that artifact from Nexus because once again, we've proved it out, we've tested it, we can validate that it was successful inside of pre-prod. And now at this point, it's been promoted to production. So that's kind of the general flow of things. So it's actually deploying the exact same artifact. It's just been processed through uh, our semi-rigid uh, CI/CD pipelines, right? And it, this was really quick, and this is a very simple example. So, try to think about how this might be extremely effective or useful for your applications, or for your release cycles, or where can I gain or garnish value from something like this to help speed up the process? Because this is where the industry as a whole is moving, right? It's moving towards orchestration across your release platforms is moving towards infrastructure as code which we see here with ansible is moving towards GitOps, where all changes and approvals happen inside of a form of git to prevent to provide that that single source of truth and then you also need to have always a ci engine in the background that is doing these and you want to be able to run a ci engine at scale across different teams so that each one of those teams can use it most effectively kind of like we displayed in or, or talked about in our initial uh, presentation of the slides today. And just as you think about it, remember that in my CI installation, basically I'm functioning as a single Java team on a single instance here, which is Team T Johnson. There could be Python, there could be infrastructure teams across the other uh, installations that could all be monitored from, from one installation, right? So here's one, two, you know, 10, 12, different Jenkins servers all managed and maintained from one Cloud BCI console, which makes life a lot easier. One authentication realm, one role-based access strategy. There's also tons of benefits to Cloud BCI from a feature perspective that don't exist in, in, in open source Jenkins either, such as full end-to-end -end configuration as code for your instance, so that you can repeat this, you can start adopting GitOps, as well as, you know, full end-to-end -end standardization for your pipeline structures as well, able to create reusable uh, content and reusable Jenkins files that can be parameterized for each of your teams rather than just using shared libraries, which are still very good, however, uh, much more limited than um, pipeline template catalogs with Cloud BCI. So just as a, a final end to our discussion today, we can now see, oh, as I'm in the wrong job, my production job is successfully completed, is relaying those statistics back to Cloud BCD, and it's just waiting for me to see, hey, was this a, a final deployment was it actually done successfully let's just go in and check and make sure that it actually exists there before we click yes we'll check this new ip so it's you know uniquely different instance here put it on port 8080 and voila there is our chat service this has been done successfully i can approve this as a successful release candidate that has been promoted to production and from here, if you needed to go back, you can review all of your summary reports across your different environments. Uh, and you're able to go in and see your dashboards as well. Uh, a couple of other really cool things that Cloud BCD allows you to do, because I'm showing one example. You may have a multitude of different releases across different times and across different user groups. You can map each one of those out on a very simple to manage release calendar as well. And as you generate more standard release structures, you can create them in a catalog and reuse them. So here's an example of the catalog, you know, with deployments across Oracle, SQL Server, Mike, Azure, GCP. You can add to this catalog as your work expands. So thank you for the time today. I know that I did a lot of speaking, a lot of quick uh, discussions there. I hope this was insightful. Thank you once again for joining uh, Karasov's Geek Week. And thank you Carousel for letting CloudBees be a part of it. And I hope that uh, this kind of message of how CloudBees SDA can help promote your IT modernization strategies at your organization. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.